Nou ja, hier is ons weer en uh, dit is een wonderlijke vorige om samen met de keier toekomstvenster nee. En je weet ons nou al die belangrijke vraag. Wat is nodig in die leven van gelovigen dat ons vandaag, morgen en die toekomst tot bij 2020 en is om je draai nee en aan die andere kant daarvan met enthousiasme, die leeftijd en, en bijzonder ook met vreugde kan leven. En dus waartoe ons onszelf verbindt en in die verband ontwikkelen ons discipleskapsmateriaal. Jy weet nou al daarvan, en ons nooi mense by wie ons kan leer. Uh, want toekomstvenster is, uh, is redig, rechtig een leerervaring. En uh, ons is baie dankbaar vir die gasten wat die by ons opdag. So please stay tuned, it's going to be one of those wonderful, wonderful meetings that we've had in the past as well. Ons gast vandag, baie bekend, Freddy Wessels. En moet ek sê, Junior, wat jou pa sing net so lekker. Ja, ek, het, ek weet nie of uh, mense my ene ken as Freddy Wessels Jr. nie, ek dink is maar net Freddy Wessels. Freddy Wessels, <laughs> Freddy Wessels baie baie welkom hier by ons in atelier. Baie ons is dankbaar dat jy die tijd kon inruim om uh, saam met ons te keier. Ach, is lekker om vandag saam met jou te keier. Freddy, ons ken mekaar oor al baie baie jare, um, uh, omdat jy uh, vooral bekend is als een sanger. Ek dink ek as een kindersanger en vandag is jy iemand wat wereldwijd besonder een pak maak en so. Maar vertel vir ons bykie van jou sangloopbaan. Ja, ek het uh, jong begin, so, um, soos wat mense seker kan onthou, um, sy oude Afrikaanse gezegde wat sê uit die oog uit die hart, so yeah. baie mense het al seker gewonder waar, waar is ek, wat doen ons, en, yeah. en so. Um, baie stad in my leven was ons baie op die pad, en albums gedoen, en, yeah. en um, oorhal, rond, oorhal getuur, yeah. elke klein dorpie, elke yeah. hoek van Zuid-Afrika, en uh, ja, dit het, um, door wat het anhoog groei, soos wat mense my ouwer word, en, en um, op, um, ek het op een plek kom ook toe, waar my stem nou breek, en allerhande sikke goeders gebeur het in ja. my leven, en uh, toe so'n bykie een breek gevat, en toe weer begin, maar ek denk op die einde van dag, sê ek dankbaar vir Heere's goedheid, en, en sy uh, leiding, dier die hele proces, uh, ek denk, ek het, um, as ek Engels, as ek transitioned, ja, in a, ja. into a new, new environment, ja. um, ek is nou, uh, uh, deel van ons leiderskap, in ons gemeente, uh, en uh, pastoor in ons gemeente, en, en ons was baie lief geraak vir local church en die kerk en, yeah. en oh, ek denk op een stad in my leven as, as een kunstenaar, um, hou tour so baie dat jy nie eindig noodwendig um, soms het die ou nie een uh, fondatie nie, nie yeah. mense wat om jou staan nie, nie een plek wat jy jou eie kan nie, nie. Yeah. that's it en um, ons is so, ek is so dankbaar om vandag dit nou te kan hee wat ek nooit van tevore gehad het, even daar my ouwers definitief my support base was en nog yeah. steeds is en um, maar ja, dit is uh, min of meer waar het begin het, uh, ek weet nie hoeveel albums nie, seker meer as 15 albums dier die jare, en, yeah. uh, maar die Heere is goed vir ons. <laughs> Freddy, now, the church that you involved with, tell us something about the church and its own uh, character and so on. Ja, yeah, I'm in a very special environment. Yes. Um, New Life Church in Bryanston, uh, our senior pastor is uh, Pastor Chris Stark. I've been involved with the church for about 8 to 9, maybe even nine years nine say. years and um it started with me um being involved in our worship ministry um and um singing and just being a part of a community yeah um it grew into me being much more involved within the internal structures of the ministry as it's as, as it stands and uh yeah today i'm uh i head up our um worship ministry and um it's just a fantastic environment just love our church love our community uh, myself and my wife are both full time at New Life Church. She is our head of sub, our creative. She's our creative director at our church, and I um, I support her in that. Um, sometimes I I just joke and say that I'm her PA, not and she's not my PA. But anyway, yeah. Um, but it's uh, a wonderful environment. We are blessed to be involved with a church that are that's got a heart for its community, and um, it's uh, being involved in our church has really changed my perspective of um, the big role that worship actually just do play in, in the heart of every believer. Um, that it's not just about creating content or music and trying to sell the merchandise, but it's about uh, equipping and empowering a community of believers uh, to know that they can take the music that we play on a Sunday and that we have created and received from the Lord as a creative. You would be in your, your room or go through situations in your life where you would write and create and, and uh, and then you put it on an album and not necessarily always think of what the impact of, of the work would be, but it's amazing to see because I'm at our church, 
most weekends that um, you know you can see the impact of the music and and the message behind the music that mm. really equips and empowers people to believe in God's goodness, believe in His grace, believe that in Him there's a hope and a future. So um, saying all that, we love our church. We are happy to be a part of New Life Church in Bryanston. And I know that it's a growing church. God blesses it, mm -hmm. and uh, it's wonderful to be part of the community like that. I was just thinking, Freddie, when you make a decision to become a singer and a musician uh, and to s actually just spend your life doing that because music is in your, in your blood, it's in your veins, yes. it's who you are, um, you have to make a decision and say, well, okay, there's the possibility of singing a secular, taking a secular stance. And with secular, I don't mean... Uh, in, a, in, in a negative sense of the word, uh, it is, it's valid, and, uh, but, but I also sing gospel music uh, and, 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 and proclaim, like, proclaim the kingdom in this way. Why did you decide that this was the way that you wanted to go and didn't follow some, uh, just call it a secular uh, 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 career? Yeah, it's, um, I, I don't think there's uh, anything wrong with uh, pursuing a secular commercial yes, yes, purpose or identity yes. um, as a musician. Yes. Um, I think uh, the world needs people of faith to uh, actually go into areas where us as the church necessarily cannot go sometimes. Yes. Or it's not that we don't want to, it's just it's we need, um, the church is all about um, people, right? So wherever we go, we need a witness. Um, so, but in my case, I... I just felt the call of the Lord at a, at a very young age, as we've mentioned earlier, growing up, um, starting with albums. And um, there's something that happened to me as a young boy where I just experienced the Lord in such, um, just in a supernatural way, uh, where I just experienced His love and His presence in a way that, um, to this day, is in a way undescribable. And, um, uh, and I always feel that same presence uh, I just, I, maybe it's just this in, indescribable love. I think that's yeah. all that it is. But whenever I minister or, pl or sing unto Him, yes. I experience that immense love. Um, I have done corporate work before um, uh, as a, young, a much younger guy and um, did a few corporate events. And, uh, and the one thing that was very noticeable to me is the fact, not saying that Jesus wasn't with me, yes, yes. just the fact that my heart wasn't connected to His heart like it would normally be yes. um, through my gift, um, it felt empty yeah. and it felt worthless to me personally. Um, where today, um, up until this day, I know that each time that I, that I take up my guitar or, or, or s sit behind uh, a piano or try to create or, or worship, it's, it's, it's so much more than just my gifting, it's that it's in a way our meeting place and yeah. maybe that's why I never pursued a commercial career um, because of my love for his presence yeah. and uh, my love for being with him and um, to be quite honest Yanni I I wouldn't have it any other way there is a song that's called in indescribable and you use the word indescribable and undescribable love the incredible uh, love and presence of God which is beyond comparison you cannot really describe it it's subjective in its nature you can't really show somebody, listen, God is present with me. I'm experiencing his presence. But you just know it. It's just yeah. there. And it is very valid and it's very wonderful. Um, I was thinking whilst you were talking about your wife being in the creative part of the ministry and you being in, in praise and worship uh, and the way in which uh, a lot of praise and worship these, these days are being presented to the audience, uh, the gathering, the, people, the saints as they come. Uh, which is far removed from the traditional way where somebody would take a book and say, let's sing songs three, four, and five, verses mm -hmm. one, two, and three. It really is, it's professional, uh, good arrangements, good instrumentation, lighting uh, that is uh, complementary, and the, the whole, the whole uh, creative part of it, creating an experience, it really is an experience. Lately, there's been a, some communication letters being written in the papers where people said, no, but we just long for those, those days yes. where things were very simple. And uh, isn't it because people don't trust God's word anymore or we miss the presence of God that people now try all these gimmicks <laughs> and so on? Um, how, how do you pursue? How, what is the relationship between um, doing it in a way that really 
appeals to the people uh, and that's creative and, and that's attractive, but at the same time not losing that focus that this is all about God, beginning and end. We have this saying at church, is, um, and uh, we always try to focus around this in our, um, I can only speak from our perspective and, and uh, where we're at and when I'm on the road for even say, um, this is our heart and our approach, is that uh, we, we love technology, we love to be able to use technology to um, further proclaim the gospel of Jesus, like what we're doing right now. Yeah, um, yes, we're able to yes. sit here, but people all over the world can tune in and, and listen to our discussion. Indeed, so yes. I love the fact that we can use technology to better our, our communication platforms. Yeah. Um, I think there's a, there is definitely a fine line between um, becoming very creative, um, but in being so creative, you lose the creator in yeah. your creativity. So, do I um, so we always try to focus on uh, what is the purpose yeah. of us being creative. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, God is the one who inspires creativity. Yeah. And um, so we, we always try to focus on, at the end of the day, uh, on a Sunday for us or at a, any event at our church, it, at the end of the day, it's about Jesus and yeah. people meeting Him because He's the only one who fulfills the need. Um, so I'm all for um, lights, cameras, and action. Yeah. Um, but if, if we missed our purpose, and that is Jesus and for, for me, uh, the Great Commission uh, to declare the gospel to, to everybody and uh, to give them opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. For me, at the end of the day, if we miss that, then all of, all of the other stuff is absolutely useless. Yes, um, but I, I, I always say this when I talk to guys around worship and I, I say we have, it's like you and your wife going to a, a, a restaurant and uh, you are both seated in this beautiful place. Yes. Uh, you feel comfortable in a restaurant if it's clean. Yes. Uh, you feel comfortable when it's beautiful and it's, you can see that people really um, went the extra mile to make you feel comfortable. Yes. And then when you, uh, when you sit down, you, you have someone to wait upon you, a waiter, and, and this lady or, or, or guy would come and, and serve you. And if that waiter, for argument's sake, would interrupt your beautiful night out with your wife, yeah. the thing that you will remember would not be all the beautiful things, but you'll remember the fact that this guy was actually in the way. Yeah. And uh, what, I try to, what we try to communicate in our worship experience is that is, that's exactly that. Jesus, we sort of setting the table yeah. Yeah. and uh, for Jesus and His bride to come together. And uh, we don't want to be the one who interferes. And what we try and do is, is trying to prepare our hearts, prepare um, musically prepare our vision, not, not saying that we do not allow for the move of the Spirit. God wants to do something different. We, we go wherever He wants to. But the big focus is that all the glory and the focus should go to Him. So we prepare the best we can and uh, so that people can at the end of the day meet Jesus and not look at our, at our faults or the way that we miss the chord or, or miss the, the, the lyrics or anything that takes the focus of Jesus, we try and get out of the way. Um, but yeah, that's the way I see it. I do also love the old, and uh, but uh, I think it's there is definitely a way we the new and the old can come together, and uh, to enrich the church at the end of the day. The, the church that you belong to, uh, I would imagine, is in, intercultural. Yes, it accommodates whoever feels comfortable and can associate with the just call it the ministry philosophy of that particular church and so on. But many many uh, environments, uh, communities of faith find it so difficult to bridge that gap and to enter into that space where people are just invited and where they together enjoy the presence of God. What difference does it make to you as a person when, when the body is representative? Yeah, I think it's, it's important to, to understand. For, we have this a slogan or, or something that we always say um, is that no perfect people allowed. Yes, yes. And uh, I think that's one thing for me in regards to our position as a church is um, our church is not a place for perfect people, people who are whole, people who are perfect. Yes. Um, yes. The church is the way I see it, a hospital. Yeah. It's a place for where broken people come. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, it's a place where people are in need of a savior and in need of hope. Yeah. And uh, I think the more we fo shift our focus as a church to, to that perspective, and when people walk through the doors of our church or even the doors of our offices or our homes or that they 
experience the love of Jesus because at yes. the end of the day, that's why people draw, were drawn unto yes. Jesus because of his uh, immense love and all these broken people who were always surrounded yeah. around him. Um, I think that should be our main focus is just to go back to basics and just love the way Christ loved. Um, and uh, I must say that um, in our community, we try our utmost to make every person who walks through those doors, no matter of his social status or of who he is or that whoever walks through those doors um, know that they are welcome and that we appreciate them being in the, in the building. Um, I think we could, to a degree at one stage, have put ourselves in a position of judgment where people actually, or the world, looked at the church as a place of judgment, where actually it's a place of reconciliation and hope. Indeed. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think that would be Coming nice. from a perspective of uh, praise and worship, especially worship, um, again, with reference to the people that came this morning, it's always a wonderful thing when I come around the corner and I see cars being parked yes. uh, outside the church building, church building and you know well there are still people that have a hunger and a desire for God and uh, what a privilege to minister to them. Uh, representative um, in that group of people are people uh, with various uh, needs. Uh, part and parcel I think of most people's uh, need at this time is, is, is what is the way forward in this nation? Where are we heading? Irrespective of who you are, what cultural group you represent, etc., etc. It seems to be a time of incredible uncertainty. Um, and coupled with that, even hopelessness when you think about uh, joblessness and you think about poverty and all these things that uh, presents itself or presents itself to us on a daily basis. So how through worship do you help people to find hope? I think the... The great thing about when we worship is that we always remind it that it's not music. It's not just about the music or the sound, even though I believe that they, a, a sound is important. Yes. Um, but I think we, what we say is, 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 is the main thing. Um, and uh, I think as, uh, as, as pastors and as, as worship leaders, and I think we have to, be ver we have to understand who's around the table and, uh, and think about it a bit more than... Maybe just what is the newest song out, yes. or what yes. is this guy singing? And it's it's a trendy track. It, for me, it's more about what it says. And um, I really, at our church, and when we're on the road, focus on what is what, who's around the table and and who are we serving, and um, also to remind ourselves that the words that we are pro singing and proclaiming are um, it does, it's not just words of affirmation that affirms us as being children of God, but it's literally us speaking life. Um, literally prophesying over our situation. Yeah. Uh, we did a song this last week by a church called Gateway, and, and the bridge of the song just says, for the heart of a nation yes. and for all generations, we pray that you'll have your way. Yeah. And um, we come in repentance yeah. through the blood of forgiveness, have your way. And I, I always feel when we sing that song, I sort of see our nation, um, you know, like you would see it in the old Atlas book, and you prof prophesying over your nation. and. And I think that is what brings hope. I think that is what brings people together is that it's not just a song. It's a, they just get this out of the way, the four hymns, and, yeah. and so we can get on with the real stuff. It's about you being involved in something so much bigger. And then I'm also, re also reminded that when your service would start on a Sunday morning, the reality is, is that there are thousands of other churches around South Africa and on our timeline across Africa in Europe that are worshiping God at exactly the same moment. Correct, yes. And to have that knowledge that we are actually globally right now yes. standing in agreement yes. and worshiping the Lord. And that happens um, 24 hours a that's day. It. Hey? And yes, uh, yes. I think that changes your perspective once again of how great God is and how big He is. And yeah. yeah, I think uh, I think that is something that we, we always try and do. And uh, I, I, I know it encourages my spirit yeah. when I do it. Um, so I believe that it does also the people who come. Freddy, nou net die laatste vraag hier, en dit is nou intussen uh, die afgelopen tijd vooral jou flerke gesprei, uh, het die heren vir jou nie vermoedelik hier oog gemaakt, vertel ek hier net van jou oorseese betrokkenheid, en wat daar aan die gebeur is. Ja, ek, ek, ek skryf baie die afgelopen tijd met mense van recht op die wereld, ja. uh, ek dankbaar dat die heren die dieren oopmaak en die geleentede, um, ja, eindelijk net, dit is alles net uit, dit is eindelijk ja. iets dat ek gedoen het nie, ja. um, so ek het die geleentheid gehad om nou met die hele klomp aan te skryf, van recht op die wereld, um, en 
en Nashville en al die plekken en uh, sure. het is ongelooflijk dat die mensen ons besiek vat en, ja. en dan wil ook gebruik en, en dan met het bedien wat fantastisch is. Ja. Um, dan ook is ik uh, deel van uh, Alan uh, Worship Pastors Association ja. in Amerika, deel van Gateway Church in Dallas. Um, en uh, elke jaar kom ik samen met ouders wat me nog meer zelf doen als ik en ja. van raag die wereld. Letterlijk, ik heb nu vrienden in Tokio, Japan en waar al die wereld, ik heb nooit gehad het niet. Ja. <laughs> um, maar het is ongelooflijk inspirerend om niet te weten dat die heren uh, mens wil gebruik, maar ook om te hoor dat hy, hy is die salle ja. in Tokio en, ja. en in Buenos Aires en in Hamburg ja. en ja. maak die ja. saak nie wat hy doen en uh, dit, dit is vir my lekker om te weet dat um, somtijds voel hy ook een beetje geïsoleerd, jy voel of jy, jy alleen hier die fight fight met die gospel en jy ja. denk jy is die enigste een wat um, dinge moet doen en dan wees die heren net van nee, jy is daar een groot army ja, van inderdaad, gelovig is inderdaad. al buiten. Net in het niet het op nou, uh, Freddy, what are you dreaming about? Where, where are you heading? What is the dream? Is there something that God has sh- shown you or something that just lives in your spirit but you really need to make it short? Short, short. Yeah, um, yeah. My dream in this moment in my spirit is, is that God will use uh, myself and my family to impact the church and help equip the church um, so that we would be the best representative of of who he is yeah. um, to a world out there through inspiring people to love him through music and worship. Yeah. Freddy, why thank you for your wonderful career. Thank uh, you. Your mooie manier van vir jou ook gesels, uh, nederig en oprecht, dit, dit is ons kostbaar. Mag die heren vir jou reiklik sien en uh, mag hy net wonderlijke geleentjere voor jou opmaak. Baie dank. En groetnis vir die prachtige gesin as wel. It was lovely listening to Freddie, not so. And uh, just also to receive, with these compliments, uh, two CDs that we can give away. Oh, we love to give away uh, things and uh, uh, yeah, at, at, at Future Window. And so this uh, CD's name is With Every Breath, Freddie Vessels. It's a beautiful CD, and uh, it is with his compliments and the compliments of Future Window. What do you have to do? Well, you know it must all. On the other side of your screen, you have your cell number, you have your name, your name, Jy stief vir ons jou uh, postadres, want as jy nou een van die aanstekens gelukkig is, ons is in elk geval gelukkig of ons hem nou kry of nie nee, maar as jy nou een van die persoene is wat dan nou uh, hierdie slag bederf word, kom ons sê maar so, dan uh, uh, moet ons jou postadres sê, so jou naam, jou postadres en natuurlijk dan jou e-postadres, dat uh, ons net uh, vir jou op hoogte kan hou van ontwikkelinge hier by toekomstvenster, met jou toestemming natuurlijk, jou e-postadres. En dan die woordkie Freddy, anders gaan ons nie weet wat het ons nou weggegeen in die program nie. So skryf soms die woordkie Freddy daar, daar iwers, dan weet ons dit is, dit is waar we het gaan. So Freddy, Wessels is een serie, With Every Breath, complimentair vir die eerste twee persoene van wie ons reaksel ons van. Maar skryf in elk geval vir ons, man, ons wil so graag hoor wat in jou leven aan die gang is en ook hoe hierdie program jou leven impacteer. Dit sal wonderlik wees. Freddy, sy e-postadres verskyn hiernaas en as jy julle kan vir hom een paar noodheidjie skryf, dat ek vir hom uitnooi of vir hom inlichting, meer inlichting vraag rondom dit wat hy gedeel het, hy sal het baie graag ook verder met julle opneem. Want die toekomstvenster ontwikkel stiltheid materiaal, een hele reeks daarvan is stands beskikbaar, ons nietste, en ons moet toch een van die dat daar oor gepraat is, die boekie oor gebed, dis negen weke, en negen weke reis, uh, oor gebed, en ons weet, het begin by gebed, het eindig by gebed, dis waar oor, dis die hart klop, ne, van ons eie verhouding met die heren. So by uh, ons uh, webwerf, en al die besonderhede is, moest nou net die iwers onder in die skerm, ne, by ons webwerf, daar kan jy bykie gaan kyk na die uh, materiaal wat beskikbaar is, kry dit in die handen vir jou self persoonlik, of vir jou gemeente, of vir jou klein groepie, en kry vir dominee of pastoor om daar oor sommer te preek ook. Dan is ons betrokken by heel wat gemeenskapsprojekte, werkverskaffing, en uh, skills development, en goeders, Ach, ons het natuurlijk jou ondersteuning nodig. Dit is moest maar so nie, dat uh, ons kan sonder daar die uh, financiële ondersteuning ook nie doen wat hier ons roep om te doen nie. So, bank besonder hier aan die einde van die program en by dank, nie dank, by voorbaat as die heren vir jou so so leid. Nogmaals dankie, was een heerlijke voorreg, weer een keer vir Freddy, mag die heren vir hom reiklik sien, mag die heren vir jou sien in jou eie context, jou eie omstandigheid, uh, jou eie uitdagings en uh, tot ons mekaar weer ontmoet alles wat mooi is. Allemaal hou daarvan om bykie bederf te word. Toekomstvenster het een maandelikse christelike pakket saamgestel, waar jy christelike dagboeken uit ons toekomstvenster reeks gaan ontvang, 
geestelike dagboeken van bekende skryvers, CD's, een DVD in jou verjaarsdag maand, een dagelijkse gedachte vir die dag wat is vir jou e-pos, en dan ook een verscheidenheid producten van speciale aanbiedingen wat ons ook wel het. Nou dit kost jou een skrale 149 rand per maand, so SMS, bedarf, naar die nummer toe wat onder aan jou skerm beskyf, en Jolandi sal jou terugskakel.